Okay, so um, for those that don't know me, my name is Catherine Summerall Real Estate with Catherine at Keller Williams Realty here in Durango. In this 2M series has been a real estate update series that I've been completing on a weekly basis where we're looking at weekly, um, the rolling past rolling seven days as to what's happening in both the Durango real estate market and its segments, as well as the Bayfield market. Um, and for those that are interested, I do send out this recording and the reporting that's attached, and I do go into further detail relative to price point. So for those that are watching, um, if you are interested in that reporting series, please just um, comment or direct message me your email, and I'm happy to get you um, added to that, um, to, to that campaign that goes out every Friday. And um, so today, let's just dive into um, what the numbers are looking like. If you have questions, um, I am monitoring um, Facebook as well. So um, if you have questions, don't hesitate to let me know and I'll address those in real time. So year over year perspective, um, we're looking at the Durango um, all new listings uh, and year over year, you can see the blue is 2019, the red is 2020. And um, yeah, it's been really great to see this type of data as we've trended here now for several weeks. Um, we're certainly still down. You can see the discrepancy there in the new listings. We saw um, you know, a trajectory here headed up for new listings on the marketplace. This is fantastic, you guys. Um, we anticipate to continue to see this trend upwards um, as a reflection to um, the time of the year. And um, yeah, you know, real estate is certainly continuing to move um, despite um, the, maybe the challenges with COVID. Moving into pending listings, you guys, this was, I was really happy to see this um, for these last couple of weeks. You can see that, you know, this was the time frame of which we were really in more of a shutdown in the state of Colorado. We had the um, stay at home order. Um, now, of course, we're in the safer at home order, which does allow for showings. So for those that are, whether you're a seller or a buyer, there are certain protocols in place um, that um, are used to protect every person. Party, you know, all parties of the transaction and um, yeah and you can go uh, you can show your house and um, go see homes and we saw the pinning activity which um, is a reflection of the demand right we, it's an indicator of demand as to how many buyers and sellers are coming into an agreement via a formal contract we saw that um, actually go over um, 2019 for that same period um, so love to see this, love to see this inverse of, um, you know, 2020 activity beating um, or exceeding what was happening at this same time frame last year. Um, really great indicator there and should provide some confidence as we continue to um, mature in what is now, you know, a little bit of the, the new world, the new COVID world. Um, we're going to now go into the um, uh, uh, pendings. And um, I do apologize here. I, I, um, I we're going to jump into just Durango sold rural solds. Um, I will add in um, the Durango uh, in general solds. Um, looks like I missed a slide there. But um, moving into Durango rural, you can start to see the sold market um, was um, in, in, in it's following that same pattern of 2019. You know, again, we started off here um, to, uh, in 2020 for this time frame, relatively strong and in over exceeding 2019 activity for that same period. And um, we're following that general trajectory. Um, we've now, you know, you can see that the discrepancy there as far as units that have sold um, in the Durango rural market. So Durango in town new listings um, saw a little bit of that lull here. Um, I am hopeful to see um, this number continue to trend upwards. Um, if you have um, listing inventory or your home in Durango that you're anticipating to um, to to, to sell or you would like to engage in that conversation, um, you know, inventory certainly is low and um, it's important to, uh, it's, it's, a, it's important to keep the fluidity of the marketplace, which is listings. I'm sorry about that. Um, 
All right, so let's dive into the next slide, which is the pendings. And again, this was one of those slides that just really excited me to see when we're talking about um, the inverse of 2020 activity versus 2019. We saw a huge increase in, proportionally speaking, um, for our market here in this last couple weeks worth of pending activity, and specifically here for the in-town Durango market. Um, I love to see that. That's really encouraging. You know, um, again, if you have a house to sell, you're in Durango, um, let's get in conversation. Um, if you are in the market to purchase a home, you know, it's important to know what inventory is available out there and make sure that you're making the best decision for you and your family. Um, and uh, yeah, that's awesome to see you guys. Mm -hmm. Durango in town solds. We've been, um, you know, you can see some volatility there, but in general, we've been hovering in this range. Um, we, you know, we're at a net zero from this this last seven week rolling period, 2020 versus 2019. So that is um, that's nice to see. And um, again, I say this um, every week, you know, the sold is a laggy measure to the marketplace because it is taking into consideration the activity that was um, about, you know, on median 30 or 45 days previous um, to, uh, to that property actually going under contract. So Durango new uh, rural, new listings. Um, I just, it's fascinating that we really do trend um, the same type of uh, frequency um, in, in listings. So I just think that that's interesting. We still are down here for this past week um, in new listings. And then we'll look at some cumulative numbers and what those look like here in just one second. Um, we saw a peak here the previous week, um, that was two weeks ago now, um, in new inventory in the rural market. Saw that decline a little bit, yet in general, we, we did see roughly about 10 um, homes come online, I think it's nine homes specifically. So the pendings, um, similar to in town, right? We saw this, um, uh, you know, we, we we crossed the uh, what was happening in 2019. We're actually um, trending higher at this time um, as far as the quantity of homes pending um, than we were in, in 2019. So very encouraging message out there for those that um, maybe have homes to sell or um, are considering selling both in the Durango rural and in town market. Durango rural sold. Um, we, I think we had um, we had seen that slide here already, um, and we do again. The sold units are down, um, yet we're tracking in a similar fashion. Um, yet, um, you know, certainly uh, lower in quantity. Okay, so here is the totals for um, the Durango rural. I'm sorry, the Durango market in its entirety. If you have a Durango address, it's included in this um, slide. And um, from March 2nd, or March 12th, excuse me, to May 13th, um, 2018 is in the blue, 2019 is in the red, and uh, 2020 here is in the yellow. So um, you can certainly see that in all categories, we are down. When we're looking at in comparison 2020 um, to 2019, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on silent. Um, we are down 35% um, in new listings taken for this time frame, down 34%, I'm sorry, 39%, almost 40% um, in um, pending activity for this time frame relative to the last year. Um, and then we're down 23% um, for sold activity. Um, yeah, that's not necessarily very positive, And yet that is the reality of what these numbers are showing us and the story that it's telling. Um, we are certainly more in alignment here with 2018, um, though we are down um, across the board for this time frame in both um, new listings, so the supply of the market, pendings, which is relative to the demand, um, and then the sold is the lagging me um, metric of, of, um, of activity. Questions about this, happy to really just dive in or answer questions um, in more detail if, if you um, are so interested. Um, so 
we're going to start, you know, as this has progressed, we've started adding in different metrics that were really a part of the conversation that we need to be aware of. Um, and so you can see here that um, this is a metric called months of supply. And that's really taking what is coming on the market or, or what's available to the marketplace. What is what how many have sold? What is the what's the rate of which homes are selling? And then based upon that rate, if no new inventory was added to the marketplace, how many months of supply would we have until the market hypothetically would be zero, zero month, zero inventory? And this is an indicator of whether you're in a buyer's market or a seller's market. I know that that's very common terminology in real estate. And roughly in that five to seven um, uh, months of supply indicates a, a balanced market. And some of that um, is specific to um, market trends, um, you know, yeah, per each uh, market community that you're working within. Um, this months of supply can be deceiving here. We, you know, we're looking at the Durango in-town totals. So the Durango in-town market segment, um, months of supply notates 6.3. Now that could be a little deceiving here as we look at what is each price point doing because it would be interesting and valid conversation if you're in the market to sell a home here in town that we really evaluate what your price bracket is doing because um, in you know the $500,000 price bracket months of supply is likely very different than 6.3 um, versus if you're in something like more of a um, a luxury market or, you know, over a million, what does that look like? And the, the months of supply indicator is very helpful to understand expectation of the marketplace, how quickly things are moving, and ultimately where is the leverage piece? Um, is the leverage in the buyer side or in the seller side, or maybe it's balanced? So um, again, same premise of um, colors here, 2018, 2019, and 2020. For the time frame, um, you can see that we we are certainly down in inventory or new listings that have come on. Um, so I continue to encourage those that are interested in selling your home. Let's get in conversation and move those products to the marketplace if it's the right time for you. Pending, you know, we're starting to I think um, bridge a little bit of this gap um, when we look at year over year totals. I'm sorry, time frame. It, well, year over year totals for this specific time frame. Um, and this was um, started here March 2nd. Um, and then, uh, you know, to our sold activity there. So, really great perspectives looking at not only 2019, but also 2018, um, and just starting to get a baseline as to what, um, what our particular COVID 19 2020 market is, um, is providing to, our, um, to the community. This is um, a, a deeper dive on a monthly basis. This reporting, uh, it comes from um, the Dringo Association of Realtors. And um, I thought it was valuable to dive into April. So this is a 30-day um, segment of time. Um, this previous reporting that I've been doing um, overlays into March. So it's a little bit more than, than 30 days. So if we just look at what's happening in April, for the in-town market, you saw that these were, this is the new numbers um, for new listings, sold listings, um, medium price points, 500, average price point, um, so that's um, averaged across the board, um, which is a little bit higher as, as 540,000. And you're seeing a high list to sales price ratio. Um, this is one thing that I really just wanted to point out that the days on market, we had started to see days on market increase in 2019 um, over 2020, and we're seeing that same trend here. So in ex the um, expectation is, um, is, just to, is to know that your days on market as a seller may be longer than you um, maybe had anticipated um, based on statistical analysis of what, that market's, of what our market is doing. Um, inventory, this talks about the availability of homes um, on the market for sale, and then months of supply. We've talked a little bit about that already, um, but this is specifically for the month of April. Um, we saw um, a actually a decrease in the months of supply from um, the time frame of which I've been reporting, which goes to show that we have had activity, right? So we've had um, inventory be absorbed on the marketplace. We haven't had um, as much 
um, listing inventory. So that's that's affected um, how many months of supply that we have. Um, so April has changed a little bit here to 5.3, um, which is a positive um, notion in my opinion. So Durango rural totals, let's um, segment into Durango rural. Um, months of supply is 6.1 for the time frame that um, March um, 12th through May 13th. So almost a two month or two month time frame, right? Um, and months of supply, again, I, I um, it's a great, great measure to talk about um, and be informed on. And also um, really important to dive into your price point when you're talking about, hey, is this indicator of what my niche of the market is? So that's, I just want to caveat that. That's really important to look at that for your price point and location. Um, in 2020, we've had 80 new listings in the Durango rural market, 40 of which have gone under contract, and almost 60 have sold. Interesting, you can see here just like the, um, in, in the Durango in town, you started to actually see more of um, discrepancies in um, previous years past. Um, and I just thought it, it's interesting to see here visually that 2018 and 2019 um, were much more comparable to each other in the rural segment. And then um, we see these differentiators here for, for 2020. Same um, previous pre uh, reporting for, um, from DAR for the month of April specifically. Months of supply looked, you know, 5.5. Uh, um, we still saw an increase of um, days on market. So these two factors here, um, important to gauge with when you're setting expectation for selling your home here in um, the Durango rural market this year. Um, we saw a little bit of a, um, of a, uh, a decrease in the list to sales price ratio, um, which is actually pretty common. Um, you know, in town um, properties tend to have uh, more demand overall, and so and lack of supply typically. Um, so you see a higher um, leverage point in the seller, which is that um, list to sales price ratio. Here's your median um, sales prices for during a rule for the month of April and your listings and sold. This is really positive in my opinion, um, this, the relationship between these two. You know, you had um, 26 new listings and um, 26 sold. So um, that's for everyone that came on the market, one went away. Um, it, obviously, you know, this number being down pretty significantly as to the number of listings that were taken um, in April. You know, so same premise, um, you know, if you have a house to sell in the marketplace, it's certainly um, an opportune time to have that conversation with your real estate um, advisor and partner. Bayfield totals, um, Bayfield has continued to um, really thrive in the time frame right now. Um, you look at the entry price of the Bayfield market being much lower than Drango, so that's certainly one piece of that puzzle. Um, we are exceeding both 2018 and 2019 numbers. Um, months of supply is 4.4. So, um, you know, that certainly lends to be more of a seller's market. Um, and yeah, we're up 14 and a half percent in new listings. Pending activity is up 30, almost 30 percent, and sold activity is up 33 percent. So awesome indicators here. Um, Bayfield, you know, is certainly an opportune time both for buyers and sellers um, and uh, worthy of having conversation as to what your equity position is and is there opportunity for you to maximize that. Um, weekly reporting, um, diving into these numbers a little bit more on a weekly basis so you can see what's happening. Um, blue is new listings, red are pendings, and um, green are sold. Um, so you can start to see over these last several weeks, our pending activity has certainly increased. We've talked about that. Um, the blue, we've seen a little bit more of a um, kind of a little bit of a lull, and then we've started to see that pin, that um, new listing, excuse me, um, inventory come up, those numbers come up. I'm hopeful to see that those will continue to come up, um, and that that's really important to uh, manage supply and demand, because at the end of the day, that is exactly what real estate is, is just managing supply and demand and the opportunities within that. Bayfield real estate market, um, again, started to see a pretty big in, uh, intake here with um, 
new listings. Um, pending listings were a little down than what we had anticipated. Um, I'm not concerned about that at all. Um, and then we have the sold number being five sold in the Bayfield real estate market this past week. Durango in town, you guys look at that. We had 14 properties um, that went under contract um, that surpassed what was brought onto the market. Um, so good, good things there. Um, yeah, a very positive indicator. Um, I love to see that. Um, let's continue to maybe increase this new listing um, number so that we can um, you know, start serving the, uh, the demand of the market. Rural, um, we saw a very base, um, uh, stable activity there with, the, with nine new listings that came on and likewise nine new listings that pended. So um, it was great to see that. Bayfield in town, we had five new listings, one pinned and one sold. Bayfield Rural, we took four new listings, one of them pinned, one of them conceptually just one available in the market and four pinned, um, sorry, um, sold. And I believe, yeah, so um, that is, um, that's it um, for the 2M series. Um, if you guys are interested in this reporting, please let me know. I put this together as a value to you um, as community members to stay informed on what's happening. Um, it's important to um, lean into the data versus, um, maybe a perceived notion of, or perceived story of, as far as what is what's happening out there because there's a lot of um, realities that are you know we, see, we saw some negative numbers year over year yet we also saw some really um, uh, strong activity and um, indicators that will help support people in their real estate goals here this year so um, I, um, I'm going to sign off. Thank you for listening if you made it this far. Um, if you have any questions at all, certainly don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I've been blessed to serve this Durango community through my vocation, which is real estate, um, for um, almost eight years now. So um, I truly love um, you know, impacting people in a positive way and serving them through real estate. You guys have a fantastic day and um, take care.